In this documentary, we will journey through the majestic Atlantic forest of Brazil to a hidden paradise deep in the jungle where a research institute is studying all of nature's secrets. The Atlantic forest is one of the most important global biodiversity hotspots, yet simultaneously, it is one of the most endangered forests with only 7% remaining. Extending along the Atlantic coast of Brazil, across into Paraguay and Argentina, this South American forest spans over 500,000 square miles. This ancient rainforest has been put at risk due to climate change and other human-caused pressures such as deforestation and hunting. Understanding nature has become a matter of urgency, as species extinction is at an unprecedented rate since the Earth was hit by an asteroid wiping out the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. The Biodiversity Research Institute, also known as IPEBIU, is a non-profit organization that conducts scientific research on biodiversity of Brazilian wildlife and ecosystems. Located in the south of the state of São Paulo, IPEBIU is situated in the UNESCO World Heritage Site in the largest remaining area of Atlantic Forest. In 2004, the reserve was constructed, and in 2007, IPEBIU, the research center, was inaugurated. O Brasil tem uma biodiversidade extraordinária e nós brasileiros temos a dificuldade de perceber isso. E o Instituto de Pesquisa da Biodiversidade, a Reserva Betalari, nasceu com esse sonho de fazer a ponte entre o conhecimento científico e as pessoas normais. Somente assim será possível preservar a biodiversidade do Brasil. In 2009, IPEBIO received accreditation as an advanced outpost of the Atlantic Forest Biosphere Reserve by UNESCO. Due to the success of the Atlantic Forest Pilot Project, IPEBIO plans to expand constructing five reserves with research centers in each of Brazil's major biomes. So, the Battery Reserve is the first unit of IPEBIO located in Atlantic Forest. And there's a second one that is being built in Amazon Forest. So the plan is to build more research centers in all the major biomes of Brazil, like Cerrado, Pantanal and Caatinga. At the Battery Reserve, various research projects have been developed related to native biodiversity. Some projects were conceptualized by professors from partnering universities, such as Professor Ariovaldo from UNESP. Olá, pessoal. Sou Ariovaldo Cruz Neto, sou professor do Departamento de Zoologia da UNESP de Claro, e vou falar para vocês um pouquinho do meu projeto que eu desenvolvo com morcegos aqui na Reserva Etária em Iporanga. Uh, morcegos são considerados um dos grupos mais diversos de mamíferos e tem uma importância fundamental na manutenção dos chamados serviços ecossistêmicos. Quer saber o quão importante é a reserva de Itália para a manutenção das populações de morcegos na região do Vale do Ribeira? E nós estamos utilizando técnicas chamadas de marcadores fisiológicos. Então, através da, da medida de, certas, uh, de certos parâmetros fisiológicos, principalmente aqueles relacionados com os parâmetros sanguíneos, nós conseguimos ter uma ideia da saúde da população de morcegos vivendo nessa área. E, consequentemente, nós podemos fazer inferências sobre a qualidade do habitat baseado no nível de saúde dos morcegos que habitam essa área. Over the years, IPEBIO has developed partnerships with an array of domestic academic institutions as well as international universities to either collaborate on projects or to send students to support our ongoing research. On a moonless night, the IPEBIO team organize expeditions into the darkness of the forest in search of nature's lanterns, known as bioluminescent mushrooms. As your eyes dilate, the forest floor soon starts to emit a green avatar-like glow, and soon the wonders of bioluminescence are all too apparent. There are approximately 88 species of bioluminescent mushrooms in the world, and Iporanga holds 19 species, making it the region with the highest concentration of bioluminescent mushrooms in the world. In our lab at São Paulo University in Chemistry Institute, we study the mechanism involved in bioluminescence phenomenon. So IPBU was very important for my project because they performed very important experiments related to the interaction of animals and one specific species, Mycena lux eterna. It's incredible. Right now, the, the main goal of our partnership is to increase the number of uh, known species, so they need to collect the mushrooms as much as possible. It's a special place 
to find new creators, especially if I'm innocent from that. The current research focus is developing a protocol that allows Ipebu to grow these mushrooms in the lab under controlled conditions, as they are only abundant in nature during the humid summer months. In 2017, Ipebu volunteer Grant Johnson found a total of seven new species of glowing mushrooms around the battery reserve. During these night searches, another major discovery was made. Biologists of Ipebu discovered the first terrestrial organism with blue bioluminescence in all of Latin America, specifically a diptera that emits blue light in the larval phase. The discovery of this larva awoke great interest among specialists in bioluminescence, and the article was published in the renowned journal Scientific Reports, which was published in collaboration with various academic partners. As this was the discovery of a new species previously unknown to science, Ipebu chose the scientific name Neoceroblatus betariensis, reflecting the fact that it was first found on the battery reserve in Iporo. The sounds of nature can tell us a lot about the health of the forest if we're just willing to listen. Bioacoustics does just this. Although bioacoustics is relatively new in the field of biology, the tool has made understanding of the forest much easier by holistically listening to the forest soundscape. IPEBU received a grant from Wildlife Acoustics whereby they donated two bioacoustics recorders and software to analyze the data. IPEBU is attempting to understand peak activity times for different species throughout the 24 hour day, as well as their seasonal activity patterns. The Bioacoustics Project has two primary goals. First, to use audio recordings to graphically map out species activity levels both throughout the day and over the course of an entire year. And second, to establish a bank of sounds that can be used for educational purposes, producing documentaries, and for producing ebooks. Ipebu is also involved in the largest bioacoustics project ever to take place related to amphibians. This project is financed by the National Institute of Science and Technology and involves 19 Brazilian universities. The aim is to look at species that occur all across Brazil to understand how climatic differences affect their vocalization pattern. The data can then be used to develop models that help biologists understand the impact of climate change on species activity patterns. The overwhelming biodiversity of amphibians in the Atlantic forest is spectacular. Yet amphibians have been particularly hard hit by climate change, causing a mass extinction. Understanding a problem is the first step to solving it, so Ipebu monitors the decline in species of frogs. Ipebu also studies these frogs during their tadpole stage to gain further insights into the life of frogs. Olá, meu nome é Felipe Toledo e nós temos um projeto em parceria com Ipebu para monitorar a presença e a variação anual da infecção por BD um fungo causador de declínio de anfíbios no mundo todo, numa população de girinos do sapo ferreiro, Boana faber. BD is widely accepted as the most deadly fungus to amphibians. Although it is hard to identify BD in frogs, there are obvious signs of infection during the tadpole stage. Most noticeably, the degradation of black keratin around the teeth of the tadpole indicate BD infection. Photography has become a powerful tool in conservation. When people see the amazing diversity of wildlife that live in the forest, they realize the value of its preservation. Ipebu often uses cameras for wildlife research. As a result, the biologists also developed a passion for photography and filmmaking. Tudo que está ligado ao processo de produção de imagens e gravação de áudios aqui na Reserva Betari está vinculado ao projeto OBIO, ou Observatório da Biodiversidade. Essas imagens a gente usa tanto para atividades de educação ambiental quanto para pesquisa, além de utilizarmos também um processo de produção de documentários, e-books e vendas para canais como o Discovery Channel. On the reserve, a new organization is open called Free Wildlife Brazil Celine, whose goal is the reintroduction of native birds. Reintroducing animals which have fell victim to the illegal trade can be complex. Critical to releasing an animal is ensuring its food source is available. 
and the tree inventory does just this. The project aims to identify and understand the distribution of fruit tree species on the reserve, as well as catalog their fruiting season. Bom, através do inventário florestal, poderemos adquirir um conhecimento geral das espécies que ocorrem na área e com isso poderemos saber quais os períodos de frutificação dessas espécies, podendo assim liberar as espécies que chegarem até nós em períodos mais específicos onde eles vão ter alimento disponível na mata. Although IBEBIO's primary focus is research, they have also developed various educational programs. IBEBIO is open for visitation to the general public so they can learn about all the secrets of the Atlantic Forest. In addition, IBEBIO has created community projects such as our Young Biodiversity Artists course. The aim of the course is to transform knowledge into art. Students learn about the importance of biodiversity conservation through the lens of a camera. There are many ways you can support IPEBIO and our projects. Become a remote IPEBIO representative and spread the word about our work. Help us raise funds for our projects or develop partnerships with other organizations. A more direct way for you to help is to get involved through our volunteer program. Don't worry, you don't need to be a biologist. IPEBIO's volunteer program has various roles, some related to scientific research, like the projects mentioned in this video, but we also need people from all walks of life, from video producers to website developers, as well as people who would like to get their hands dirty in gardening. 